Justin here from Amplified Parts. Today we're going to talk a little bit about tubes. Specifically, who's making tubes now? And a little bit about NOS tubes. So we'll start first with talking about who's making tubes right now at this moment. There's not any tubes made in the United States anymore. Occasionally we'll get the, the random guy who's like, oh, I hear, you know, they're making tubes at this weird factory in the middle of nowhere. And this, to our knowledge, there's no one making tubes in the United States. They're all made overseas. And here are your three factories. Your first factory is going to be the JJ factory. It's their own factory. They make all the JJ tubes there. It's in Slovakia. Uh, basically, they moved all the equipment from the old Tesla factory in Czechoslovakia over to the Slovak Republic, and they're making all their tubes there. Great solid tubes, and they, they may do a little contracting work for other people for the majority of stuff coming out of there. They're JJ branded tubes. So the second factory on this list is going to be the Saratov Russia Old Reflector Factory. Basically, they're the ones making any tube that's made in Russia at this point. Uh, you know, you're going to have your Electroharmonix, your Sovtech, your Tungsol reissue, Muller reissue, Gentilex Gold Lion, probably a whole bunch more. Um, like I said, they're the only ones in Russia making tubes now. There used to be a factory that was the JSC Svetlana factory. That has closed. We've gotten that confirmed multiple times. It does not exist anymore in terms of producing vacuum tubes. Um, it may still be in operation for other, other purposes. I mean, who knows what they're doing with the building, but definitely not making tubes for the export market. And when they were making them, those were the ones that you'd see that were branded winged C. We still carry some of those. We have a few left in stock. So the third and final current factory is going to be the Shugwang factory in China. Literally any Chinese tube is made there. You know, some of the rubies, some of the groove tubes, uh, a bunch of those rebranders, they'll get their tubes from China. Um, not always all of them, but probably a majority of them. Uh, and then you're going to have your uh, brands such as Tube Amp Doctor. They'll do um, like really high spec Chinese tubes. They'll design the tubes. They'll have China make them. Then they'll get sent over to Germany where they will like thoroughly inspect them. I mean, they test for everything over there, microphonics, balanced triodes everything. So you're getting like the most quality Chinese tube you can get that's already been weeded through for any like quality control issues or anything like that. They're great tubes. Um, I really like them a lot. So that's it for, for tube factories. Those are your tube factories. So if anyone's telling you like, oh, this new so-and-so tube is made here in the US, it's probably not true. They're just made in those three factories and that's where you're getting them all. Next, we'll talk about NOS tubes. For that, we're going to cruise on out into the warehouse and we'll show you a little bit. All right, let's go. So we're back here in the warehouse. What we're going to talk about first is what NOS means. We're, you know, we're in the NOS section. Uh, NOS means new old stock. So basically what that means is that, you know, when the solid state changeover happened, when they're moving into transistors, a lot of these tubes had been produced, but there wasn't really a whole lot of need for them anymore. So a lot of them just wound up in someone's basement or storage space just sitting there because, you know, the world had moved on, so to speak. Um, obviously, this isn't true because we sell a ton of them and people definitely have a need for new old stock tubes. But at the time, everybody was trying to move that way and that was just kind of the way it was going. So let me show you a couple things. Um, first, we're just going to show you some tubes. Uh, basically, like you'd imagine, tubes at one point were used in everything. TVs, um, radios, hi-fi equipment, military equipment, all that stuff. Um, eventually, as things got pared down with the solid state changeover, uh, tubes became less and less common. They still made them, but even now today, people are still making them like we talked about before. They're just made overseas and they're generally for that whole like hi-fi, um, guitar, amp type of situation now. I mean, they're not using them in TVs anymore, obviously. Your flat screen wouldn't look very good with uh, a whole bunch of tubes in it. Wouldn't be able to stay very flat now, would it? Um, so we're gonna cruise through the warehouse here just a little bit. I'm gonna show you some stuff, talk a little bit more. Um, yeah, let's go. So, as I said before, you know, all kinds of people use tubes, you know, um, TV and radio manufacturers, like this tube says Zenith on it, you know. Um, 
We'll cruise through a little more and find some stuff. The automotive industry, automotive radios we're using them. You know, you got your GM, General Motors, Delco. And then you also had military contracts. So the military tubes generally be in like a gray or white box a lot of times and they'll be labeled JAN. They'll say Joint Army Navy right on them. So you're gonna find a lot of tubes that were made that way. Once those military contracts started to dry up, tubes again start to dry up even more. And, you know, in that regard, they were used even less. A lot of those US factories just started closing down. The last US made tubes were, you know, they, they got kind of cut off somewhere right in the mid 80s, somewhere around like 1985 or so, they stopped making tubes in the US. So any tube that you see that's made in the US, that's gonna be a new old stock tube at this point. So let's talk a little bit about NOS tube cosmetics condition, etc. So as you'd imagine, a lot of these tubes, I mean, they're 50, 60 years old. I mean, a lot of the boxes that they came in were designed to last a couple years while, you know, your TV repairman had them in his tube caddy. Uh, that is not the case. And now they're 50, 60 years old. And some of these boxes, you know, are, are perfect. You know, you'll find, find boxes like this. It'll look great. And, you know, sometimes, like, like I said, the boxes will be in really good shape. Other times, those boxes are going to be, they, they literally crumbled when we took them out to test them. You know, I mean... The, these boxes, again, were not made to last that long. I mean, they're cardboard, so, you know, they've, they've been stored in a dank basement and they're just beat up, and, but the tube itself is still perfectly fine. I mean, again, it may not look perfect, it may be a little dirty, but we're not necessarily gonna clean them off. If you use any kind of solvent on these, sometimes this screening will just wipe right off. You're not even gonna know what kind of tube it is. You know, you, you don't really wanna do that. So, even though your tube may be a little dusty, a little dirty, still gonna function perfectly fine. Um, sometimes your pins will be a little darkened, but not a big deal. Your tube's still going to be good to go. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the getter flash on tubes. A lot of NOS tubes, new tubes, they're going to have it. And people will call back in and be like, hey, my tube is, is bad. It's burnt out. And that's not the case. Uh, basically, your getter flash is from when they were removing the final bits of air out of the tube itself to create the vacuum. It's how the whole tube works, you know? So the process by which they do that will sometimes create these marks. It may be on the side like this, or on this tube here, you'll even see a couple of them are on the top. So again, you know, they might be all over the place, but that doesn't necessarily mean your tube is burnt out or anything like that, or it's been used excessively. It's just part of the process of making the tube. As you know, we buy in tubes here. I mean, that's where else are you gonna find NOS tubes at this point? So, you know, I just wanted to show you real quick how, you know, how we test them in. So all the tubes will come in, folks like you will mail them into us, and we're gonna test them on military grade equipment and make sure that they're good to go before we buy them in. That also guarantees that anyone who's buying those NOS tubes is gonna get a good, solid working tube. Like I said, we test them all to the standards that the Army themselves laid out for the TV7. So if they're testing new for the Army, you're probably going to be doing all right. Right now, I'm just going to kind of get to the fun part. We're going to show you some cool old boxes on a lot of these tubes. Uh, that's the best part when I come back here and I'm, I'm looking at stuff. It's just some of the boxes are just super cool and the artwork is really neat. Check it out. So right here we got, look at that. Look at that old box. Made Chicago, USA. Let's cruise through and check out some other ones. We got a nice old RCA little little meatball logo tube. As you can see, this one actually says US Navy on it. So this is actually a Jan tube. This was this was produced for the Navy. This is one of the ones that actually isn't in a white box. This is pretty early on. Tubes through here. You're gonna have some you're gonna have some really huge tubes too. Like this isn't a box, but let me just show you. Check that bad boy out. Look at that. This one here is like bomb proof. I mean, it's literally an air sealed can. How cool is that, huh? This one here, most of our tubes are gonna be US made. You're gonna get the occasional like French one, German ones like Telefunken's, British ones, um, you know, like a Mullard. Uh, this one's actually Japanese, it's Mitsubishi. You can see there. And then, uh... <laughs> check that one out. That's got some cool writing, huh, on the logo? Satron. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually get to, this is my favorite box in the whole warehouse. I've, I've checked it out a million times. Look at the art on this box. How cool is that? That forest scene. That's an old one. Pretty cool, huh? So that's about it. 
Just a heads up, we do buy tubes from the general public. We put out a bid list about every two months that's gonna have every tube we're buying at that time on it. We can always have that emailed to you or mailed to you, etc. cetera. Uh, you just wanna get in contact with us. Uh, if you got some tubes that are down in your basement and they're just collecting dust in their grandpa's old tubes or something like that, send them our way. We may give you a little money for them. That's it. Thanks a lot.